Hi everyone, I'm Anna Kachikian and this is the Armenian Report. We are doing a new live interview series here um, on the Armenian Report and our first guest is Armenian chess player Maria Gevorkian who there's a breaking news happening in the past couple of days in regards to her story. So um, we are launching our live interview series where when there's breaking news we bring on the guests and we do these interviews and this live interview is brought to us by Panya. Panya is an Armenian owned jewelry brand. It's an Armenian owned jewelry company and they uh, sell online um, gold jewelry for men, women, and children. They have the Armenian alphabet and the evil eye and, and, and everything Armenian that you need in gold. They have it available for you. So thank you to Panya. And I cannot wait to speak with Maria Gavorkian, hear her story, and share it with all of us here. Um, Maria, uh, you're here. <laughs> Could we hear you? Could we see you? Hey. Hi, thank you so much for uh, doing this and, and, and dealing with our technical difficulty, difficulties. Um, this is a story of Facebook, a story of my life for the past four years, but we want to hear your story. Can you tell us what happened? Um, really quickly, I want to kind of lay the, the foundation. Um, Maria is a chess player, Armenian chess player. She was scheduled to go play in a tournament in Turkey and she was withdrawn because uh, Azerbaijan said, if Armenia is going to be there, we're not going to be there. Right? Right. Uh, so actually the story is that I was playing a tournament in, uh, uh, I was playing a tournament in Greece and then I got an invitation from one of uh, Turkish organizers. Okay. And, uh, so I the Turkish organization the reached out? Not that one. It was a different one. So okay. I, I played a tournament in November which to which he invited me and everything was organized very well and I really enjoyed the tournament. So he texted me and he said that there is a tournament and he's giving my contacts to the organizers so we can discuss everything and they will invite me uh, with the every expenses and uh, everything will be covered. So I decided to play there. So I started talking to the organizer, uh, Mustafa Erdoglu, and um, what happened was that uh, we were already checking the tickets and I also uh, talked to my Swiss friend and uh, she decided to join me uh, with, uh, with, she was going to cover her expenses. So oh, she's uh, all the, your your sorry your Swiss friend is also a chess player. She's also a chess player. Okay. So she she said that she will come and she will cover her expenses. Okay. And, well, hold on. Uh, let me clarify. So so yeah. Turkey's saying we'll cover the Armenian players' expenses, but the Swiss player saying don't worry about it. I'll cover mine. Uh, because I have I have a title. I have a title, international master. So it was fine. And there we are go. friends okay. and we usually travel together, so for us it's okay. also fine. Okay. And uh, afterwards, I, he texted me that maybe the prices are high for the ticket and uh, he is having difficulties. And my response was that uh, no problem, if the tickets are very expensive, I can cancel it because I have a lot of stuff to do in Armenia. So it's not a big deal. Okay. The answer was uh, no, not a big deal. We are waiting for you in Turkey and we are checking the tickets and so on. So it, it's the whole process that is always happening yeah. with the tournament. So uh, and I went to the game and they were checking the tickets. You After did, wait, you from, went? No, no, no. I was playing the tournament in Greece. So I oh, had a game it. that day. Okay, okay, okay. So I returned from the game and I opened my messages and Actually, I was not thinking about it, but I was uh, expecting to have the tickets already. And then I read this message, and I'm like, what? Can I, yeah, can yes. I read the message? So the message yeah. is from Mustafa Ergolu, and who's, who's Mustafa Ergolu, by the way? He's, he's the organizer? The, one of the or I don't know. If, uh, probably he's one of the organizers. Okay, of the okay. So he writes to Maria and says, Azerbaijani athletes have submitted a petition. If the Armenian athletes play, we will not participate in the tournament. Coordinator canceled the ticket accommodation. Very sorry. By the way, there's no punctuation. That's why I intentionally read it that way. Um, 
you know, to humor it also. Um, but so he says, he's very honest. He says that the Azerbaijani athletes have submitted a petition that says if an Armenian athlete plays, that they will not participate in this tournament. So Turkey chooses Azerbaijan over, you know. Yeah, he was, he was too honest. <laughs> yeah. He was too honest, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. I can respect the honesty, right? So tell us what, then what happened. Uh, then what happened was that I did the Facebook post uh, telling people about what happened. And my goal was that so I will let people know. And I didn't know where the story is going and how far is it going. But my main goal was, okay, this happened to me. And I really don't want this to happen to anyone else again. Mm. Okay. And the whole thing is going for this. So this will not happen again to anyone. Yeah. And uh, uh, after my post, my federation sent an um, email to FIDE and we asked, uh, asked the opinion what FIDE can thinks you, about can the situation. You, can you clarify with everyone what FIDE means? FIDE is the uh, International Chess Federation. Federation de SEC, uh, de SEC. I guess okay. something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Artem is asking, they dropped the champion from the tournament? Yeah, I was dropped off and uh, of course I was registered and I didn't plan to play there. They invited me, so I was dropped off. Okay. Um, and so your mission with with this, when this happened to you, is that you don't want this to happen to anyone else. And so what has been the response? We are still waiting for the response uh, from the FIDE, which will be official. I have some news about what thing, what people think in Turkey and in Azerbaijan. I, to be honest, I got some messages from Turkish chess players and not only chess players, and they were saying, "We are sorry that this is happening to you," and I really appreciate these messages. And for Azerbaijani part, they say that uh, they have no idea what happened and they don't have any connection to this, because we asked for the letter, petition letter from the organizer, and I never got it. Oh, so you're saying that that you personally have a decent relationship with Turkish chess players and Azeri chess players, or you don't have any relationship with players? Uh, I, I have friends. I have Turkish friends. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I cannot say that I have many Azerbaijanian friends, but uh, we, ha we have more you're professional. Cordial. Yeah, you're yeah cordial. we are more professional. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you think that they were the ones who had this petition or do you think where did this petition come from if you're saying that the athletes are cordial amongst one another during tournaments then where did this petition come from where is mustafa orgulu getting this from i really don't know i mean there was no letter maybe they just talked about it or i i don't uh, lately lately i even checked the playing list of the tournament and i didn't know many chess players other chess players who could say it against me so I, I was really shocked that if the finance was a problem, before I offered that if it's a problem, I may, I may not play there. It's, it's not a big deal for me. Okay. Maybe so, there was some talks. I, I really don't know. It's, we are uh, trying to find it out. Gotcha. And what has your coach, what has the you know uh, Armenian Chess Federation, what have they said or um, advised you to do? What's their stance on it? Okay, I, I was playing a tournament in Greece, as I told you, and my coach was there, so they told me not to worry about anything and just to concentrate on my tournament, because that is more important now, and we'll understand what is going to happen later. Gotcha. Artem is saying, has she played against Azeri chess players before? Of course, we have played many times, like many, many yeah. times. Yeah, so it just... I didn't know that. I didn't know that you have played with each other before and that it's a cordial uh, athlete, you know, relationship. And that's how it should be. Um, that's why it, this message is so bizarre to say that the athletes submitted a petition. It's really, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense that they're throwing it on the people when it seems to me like it's not the people. Because the people, the athletes are fine. The athletes are always fine. I mean, I don't know the athletes who would do this. 
especially the professional ones. I can't imagine if uh, the professional one will ever think something like this. Gotcha. Um, where, um, so instead of doing the tournament, uh, tournament, what did you do during those, those, the, the days of the tournament? Oh, gave interviews. Actually, I, <laughs> uh, the interviews too, but I, uh, my, my sister, my cousin, she came from us to Armenia with my small niece and oh, they were actually nice. here till they are t here till tomorrow. So it was the exact dates of the tournament. Oh, and as long as they out. have been here, I was not really in Armenia. So I spend as much time as I can with them, and I still spend time with them. Yeah. Where is yeah, your sister from in the U.S.? Because predom predominantly, mainly the people watching are going to be from the U.S. Where, where, yeah, what part she, of the U.S. is she? She's from Los Angeles. And, oh, nice. and I also have my Yeah, and I also have my best friend from U.S. too in Armenia. Though she's going to stay here until December, but uh, I mean, I really wanted to spend some time with them. Yeah. And cool. I, yeah, so that was my lead. Um, for people who are watching, and there are going to be some, you know, non-Armenians watching, or even Armenians who are watching, who they don't know how huge chess is in the Armenian uh, community, especially, um, especially uh, in schools and children, like, like chess is a major sport that they're taught from a really, really young age. Can you kind of tell... Uh, share with everyone your journey with chess and your like i mean congratulations i didn't know but you you're like you're a champ and so that's so cool that i i mean i i've never met a chess champ before so this is i, I like again complete uh uh it's it's cool to hear like where did you start how did you get to what you like how did you decide like you love chess like i play tennis right like i want to hear your story of of how you started playing chess I'm sure we're going to meet one day. So, okay, I, I will tell you my story. I started playing chess when I was three. My grandfather taught me. And, um, I mean, I didn't take chess classes, but I was in the winter time I, when I usually I was not playing outside with kids. I was uh, taking the chess book and I was just solving puzzles. Yeah. It's not the thing that children usually do. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> So when I turned seven and okay, seven and a half, I decided to take chess classes and I asked my family to take me to chess classes. My uh, petition, wow. yeah, I, I went there, I went there. So I started from a small school and then I started taking classes in Chess Academy of Armenia. Mm -hmm. And when I was already eight, so I was playing chess for a little more than a half year, I was already playing in women's high league, uh, first league. So it, it was a very funny how, story. How old were you when you were playing? In the I was Wimbledon? eight years old. I was wow. eight years old. And oh there God. was even a funny story. Prodigy. Because one of the chess players, she was like, okay, he, the kid can go downstairs because we are start, starting the games. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you no, she's playing here. Yeah, they were like, no, she's playing here. <laughs> so have you been able to um, make a, a career out of being a chess player since eight years old? Yeah, chess has been my life and I had many opportunities in life just not to continue, not, not with chess, but chess is my priority always. And it gave me a lot of things in life, like many things. So yeah. I will always owe many things to chess and I'm doing my best to return as much as I can to the game that I love the most. Uh, how often do you travel and play? Oh, it depends. It really depends, but I really travel a lot to play. And I travel, and I try to take some, make some time for chess and my traveling, and just to see, to see the sights or to go mm -hmm. to the sea. I mean, there was a year that I almost traveled the half, more than half of the year. So, um, can you? Um, Artem has a question. It's funny because that I was gonna get to that question. So let's let's answer mm -hmm. Artem's question before we get to mine. He says, "How how uh, how many men uh, versus women are on the team?" Um, he wants to know more about the Armenian team. So, like in the Armenian team, how what's the number ratio with women and men? Okay, so the thing is that we don't have the mixed team. We have the Armenian men's team and we have Armenian women's team. 
How many in each one? Are there more it, men? It, we no, have women? five, five. We have five men players and five women players. Got it. And do you, would you say that both the men's and women's team are really strong? Uh, men's team are very strong. And last year, our Armenian women's team was also playing quite good in the Olympiad. So the women team made the, even the better result than the men's team. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, but with the results, our men's team was Olympic champion, world champion, and European. So mm -hmm. they have more titles. Yeah. Um, is, there, is there like a, a thing in chess where it's like it's a men's game or it's a women's game? Is there such stereotype between like it's a men's thing, it's a woman's thing, or no? You guys are equal. I think I think it's almost everywhere, but especially in chess. So usually men are stronger. And even sometimes when I'm telling people that I'm going to the tournament, which is an open tournament where men and women are playing each other, mm -hmm. they're like, oh my God, are you playing with men? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's shocking But I mean, yeah, them, right? there, there's, there's a stereotype that men are stronger and yeah, I think they prove it. Okay, uh, hold on. Um, Vikan has a question. Do the women ever play against the men? That's a great question. Of course, of course. I mean, the great example is Judith Polgar, who, uh, who has all been the all-time best woman chess player, mm -hmm. and she was beating world champions. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, she even beat Kasparov, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Keep the questions coming. This is this is. I, I, I'm I'm so. Uh, I might mean my whole life been so disconnected from chess that it's 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 one of the the sports after golf that I don't know anything about. So all of this information is so unique and 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 fascinating to me. Um, can you talk about like what is the process of like if you know if someone. And, and your niece is from LA, right? Uh, it, chess is not a common sport here where we live. Um, what would you say to parents who are watching about, you know, the, the importance of playing chess or getting their children engaged in chess or encouraging their children to play chess? Okay, chess has many, many good aspects. First of all, it uh, teaches to be concentrated, patient, fair, yeah. And uh, it, it, there are even some researches that it is helping to fight against Alzheimer. And actually, there are that. some chess players from Los Angeles, uh, Tatev Abrahamian from Armenians, Andranit Matikozian, and ma many, many others. So I think it's more or less uh, popular there. Really? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, let, don't don't take my word for it because again this is this is why I like to do these sorts of lives because when it's an unknown territory for me I'm extremely fascinated by it so when you like I just want you to keep talking and teaching me things you know because it's so interesting to me but uh, Narvik Manosian has a question he says is there any Armenia women grandmasters yeah we have we have only one of course yet hopefully yet only one mm -hmm. uh, woman. Not a woman grandmaster, but a man's sorry, grandmaster. I'm sorry, I'm the same. And we have yep. women, we have women <laughs> grandmasters. Yeah. Uh, I will also I will also become myself a women grandmaster in, in like uh, twelve days. So really, <laughs> yeah. No, What's... not man's grandmaster, but a women no, no, grandmaster. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, still, but like, explain to us why in twelve days. What does that mean? Can you? Yeah, I will, I will. So the thing is that when every chess player has a rating, international okay. chess rating, which is called by FIDE. Okay. We already know FIDE. Yes, yes, we've already so, established it. People watching yeah. already know. When you are we're playing a tournament, we are playing the opponents who have a rating. And if there is the rating that is needed to, we need uh, three GM norms. Not only GM, international master also. We need three... Uh, norms which we get in the tournaments and we have to show some performance which will be eligible to get the norm so it, it will prove that I'm this okay. strength and I deserve okay. to be uh, titled okay so we play the tournament we get the rating we get three title three norms and that mm -hmm. is enough to, to get the title 
But for right. these three, three norms or the rating, we are playing like all our lives. Gotcha. Um, do you think that Armenia supports chess players strongly or do you think that there should be a little more um, support from the Armenian government as far as uh, our chess athletes go? Uh, I think uh, chess players always got a huge support from uh, government and people. Uh, we can see when Levon is playing, like all the nation is talking about it. You can just be crossing the road and there are some grandpas playing chess outside and like, did you see Levon didn't see that move today? <laughs> How we could miss that? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so Anush is saying that uh, there are few actually Armenian chess clubs here in Los Angeles in the Valley. So um, for those of anyone watching from LA who is doesn't know anything like I like me there are you know some chess clubs available for your kids for yourself to to, to attend so thank you Anush uh, Artem is asking at what level are the Turkish and Azeri, Azeri teams when compared to Armenia oh I, th I think they are equal uh, maybe not the Turkish team but the Azeri team is equal so they have a strong and chess team same. They have, they have a, ch a strong chest team, men okay. and women, but... Okay, there you go. All right, everyone, um, before we wrap this up, um, I want to bring the story back to why we're doing this live, which is the unfortunate decision to withdraw Maria from this competition, uh, from this tournament, simply because she's Armenian. Um, it's ridiculous, it's appalling. Um, I personally believe that when it comes to athletes, this politics needs to completely be dissolved. It's just, it's not fair. And even Maria said it, you know, when, when they're extremely cordial with one another when they're playing and that's how it should be. Um, and I think everyone, everyone would agree in every sense, you know, even with Armenians and Turks, like it's the same exact thing, you know, it, when you're playing with a, with a Turkish person, you're not going to have this, you know, hate towards them given our history together you know it, you, there needs to be some sort of separation and that's exactly what you're saying right maria you're saying that you're speaking out because you don't want anyone else to go through this yeah i, I don't want anyone to go through this and i don't want people to uh, connect sports and politics yeah um what's your next step what do you uh, think you're going to hear back from them I, I hope that the people who are uh, guilty, they will be punished and they have to be punished so the pe people other, uh, after this will not try to do such kind of things to any athlete. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just patient and I'm, I'm waiting for the response and I will be uh, training and continue what I was doing before. Very cool. And what's your ultimate goal with chess? What can we expect from you? What What's your goal? Manifest it with us. Oh, be before I became the uh, okay, I didn't yet, but before I became the women grandmaster, it was it was becoming women grandmaster. So afterwards, I will uh, play more tournaments and uh, train more and try to get better, just to uh, make everyone proud. Yeah. Well, um, we're really proud of you. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for your patience with the technical difficulties. Um, the Armenian Report is always here to uh, support ath Armenian athletes such as yourself um, and, uh, and give you guys a platform to share your story so that um, you know upcoming um, young athletes who, God forbid, do experience this sort of discrimination moving forward, they can he look back at these sorts of interviews and, and your stories and say, well, this is how Maria handled it. and I'm going to be very vocal and, um, and proud and, um, and share my story and say this, you know, speak up against it. And that's how it should be. Yeah. The thing, uh, I wanted to say that after I came out with the post, there was a, really tremendous support uh, from Armenians and from Armenia, from outside Armenia and it, it really moved me and it was really exciting and I want to yeah. say thank you to you too because 
uh, you were worried about my story and yeah it was yeah, thanks for inviting me here yeah all right likewise and um, when they come back with any sort of updates or anything um, we, you and I will be in touch so that way we can update everyone on the Armenian report because um, once people feel invested into in a story I think it's important to hear updates on what what next how was this resolved you know moving forward are you playing tournaments did you get your grandmaster title like these are all things people would definitely want to know so keep us posted and let us know okay I will. Before I was not really a poster. I was not even on Facebook, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Utilizing I, I, your, your platform and your voice. Get out there. Now, yes. now I have to be on Facebook and I will keep you updated. And <laughs> thanks for your interest. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, have a good night, Maria. It is uh, 1230 at night in, in Yerevan where she's uh, streaming live with us right now. So have a, have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your summer with your uh, sister and your niece and your best friend from LA. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. And have a good day. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. And that was that. Thank you so much. These are the live interview series on the Armenian Report. This live was brought to us by Panya. Uh, go to Panya.com for all your gold. Uh, jewelry needs for men, women, and children. They've got, like I said, Armenian alphabet, the evil eye, the, the little thing for the baby. She's got it all. And she's a woman and is an Armenian-owned company. So there you go. Introducing one at a time to you guys. Uh, thank you again for, for watching this live. And I will keep you guys update, updated on Maria's story, on what, what's happening, what's their comeback. Because the story doesn't add up if the athletes are cordial and they're saying the athlete said that. Doesn't make sense. The story doesn't add up for me. So uh, we got to get to the bottom of it. Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you guys on Instagram stories and on um, Facebook. Take care. Bye.